These are the best mobile RPGs. Pixel Dungeon is a roguelike game with pixel graphics and simple controls. Explore the depths of the Pixel Dungeon, collect useful items and treasures, fight monsters to find the Amulet of Yendor, the greatest artifact of this game world. Each level is generated anew when starting a new game. The location of rooms, objects, enemies, traps, other terrain features, and the appearance of the level itself changes. For example, rare reward rooms may appear on floors where there were none before, or you may end up on a floating platform level instead of the normal sewer level. Freedom of action in game situations is one of the most important components of replay value and why many people love roguelikes. Depending on the equipment, class, terrain, and circumstances, the same places can be passed in different ways. For example, a magician or huntress will most likely shoot an enemy from afar, a thief will pass by or lure him into a trap, a warrior will crush all enemies nearby or read one of the famous scrolls, and having a snack to restore some health will go on to destroy. And there are many such moments in the game, which is good news. Eternium is a free-to-play action role-playing game with an isometric camera view in a fantasy setting for mobile platforms. Venture into dark caves and dungeons, explore forests, villages, and cemeteries, the siege demon-controlled castles, brave snowy mountain peaks, travel to the moon to slay strange creatures among craters and canyons and beyond, reach deserts, pyramids, and jungles of red planets. Before we start playing, we are asked to create a character by choosing his gender and one of three classes, mage, warrior, and bandit. I played mainly as a warrior, but I also tried out a mage. In total, we have two slots available for characters, and three more can be open for rubies. The plot campaign consists of passing through relatively small levels locations. This is accompanied by small quests in which the plot itself is narrated. Each location can be replayed if you suddenly want to level up more. There are four chapters available in the game. In the first chapter, there are 13 levels, and in the second, there are already 12. The game also has a challenge mode, a series of levels with increasing difficulty in which we must defeat enemies and the boss within a certain time. Graveyard Keeper is a humorous farmer simulator about a cemetery caretaker from the Street Petersburg studio Lazy Bear Games. Having an accident, the main character wakes up in a cemetery. He doesn't remember how he ended up here, but for some reason his new friends, Jerry the Skull and the Talking Donkey, assure him that he has been taking care of the graves for years. They remind him of local customs, for each person buried they give a certificate, for which you can get a handful of coins from the local innkeeper. The game provides ample opportunities for construction and creation of objects useful in the medieval economy. For these purposes, the character menu has as many as six technology sections, such as alchemy, farming, and metalworking. The main goal is to return home, but the game hardly leads you by hand and doesn't tell you how to do this. This is an important feature of Graveyard Keeper that can disappoint some players. You can spend many hours trying to make progress in a certain quest, only to realize that it would have been more effective to concentrate your efforts in another direction first, making it much easier to solve the original task in the future. Day R Survival is a survivalist simulator set in the vastness of post-nuclear Russia, where fighters from warring factions and dangerous mutants are at every turn. The main character goes on a deadly journey across the country to save his family. War never changes. In 1985, the USR fell under the onslaught of an unknown enemy. In a matter of days, the entire country turned into a radioactive wasteland. Now violence, hunger, and disease reign here. Terrible mutant monsters roam the ruins of Soviet cities and are looking for something to satisfy their hunger. You have to explore cities, look for food, medicine, tools, and weapons. It will be necessary to monitor hunger and thirst, face and cope with many diseases and injuries, travel hundreds of kilometers across the territory of the USR, and fight mutants and other survivors. The crafting and skill system will help the player in all this. Day or Survival is a survivalist simulator set in the vastness of post-nuclear Russia, where fighters from warring factions and dangerous mutants are at every turn. The main character goes on a deadly journey across the country to save his family. War never changes. In 1985, the USR fell under the onslaught of an unknown enemy. In a matter of days, the entire country turned into a radioactive wasteland. Now violence, hunger, and disease reign here. Terrible mutant monsters roam the ruins of Soviet cities 
and are looking for something to satisfy their hunger. You have to explore cities, look for food, medicine, tools, and weapons. It will be necessary to monitor hunger and thirst, face and cope with many diseases and injuries, travel hundreds of kilometers across the territory of the USR and fight mutants and other survivors. The crafting and skill system will help the player in all this. Revenseward Shadowlands is an adventure role-playing game developed and published by Crescent Moon Games for mobile devices and PC. Players are sent into a fantasy world where they have to explore different parts of it, fight monsters, and complete quests to uncover the secrets of this mysterious world. The game offers open-world features where players can freely move around the world, explore its surroundings, search for treasures, and fight enemies. It also has various tasks that players can complete to earn rewards and progress through the story. Ravensward, Shadowlands is about the attack of a powerful demon. This evil creature controls tens of thousands of people and millions of animals. It has long been hungry for power and one day decided to bring its plans to life. After the attack of a powerful dragon, there was only one survivor, our main character. After some time, he returns to his hometown, Avon, and talks with the leader of the uprising, the Supreme Mage. He thanks him for fighting bravely and entrusts him with a responsible and very difficult task, to capture that very powerful demon. Shattered Pixel Dungeon is a classic turn-based roguelike that's easy to understand but hard to master. The game features five different heroes, randomly generated levels and enemies, and hundreds of items to find and use. Shattered PD is updated every two to three months, so there's always something new in the game. As you progress through the dungeon, you'll earn points that you can spend on talents, choose a subclass, and gain powerful late-game abilities. You can turn the duelist into a dual-wielding champion, the mage into a soul-sucking warlock, the huntress into a resilient guardian, or try many other possibilities. The game's spirit is very reminiscent of the original Pixel Dungeon. This is not surprising, because the developers openly state this even on their Steam page. Pocket Rogues is a fast-paced, old-school action RPG with roguelike elements. Here you have to fight your way through hordes of monsters, traveling through unique, randomly generated locations, and developing your own fortress and heroes. The gameplay is a mixture of the good old RPG and roguelike. From RPGs, this game has the familiar system for leveling up a character's stats and skills. From the roguelike, Pocket Rogues received a system of randomly generated dungeons. Even when choosing a location that has been completed a long time ago, the player can never be 100% sure of what can await him at the next level. These could be ordinary catacombs with boring rooms and bare walls, or maybe there is a hidden passage to a boss's lair or a wandering merchant's camp. But the most interesting thing is how the game combines these two genres. Essentially, every new dungeon run is a new game. The player has with him only the skills and characteristics that he upgraded the character earlier. Loot and experience levels are collected in the dungeon, and after death they are sold for gold, the main currency with which you can improve your fortress and buy all sorts of goodies for your character. Undecember is a hack and slash action RPG where players can bypass the normal skill limits by endlessly combining a variety of skill runes and binding runes. The game begins with an introductory cutscene where the necromancer revives the undead and the hero deals with him, simultaneously undergoing training in the combat system. Afterwards, we wake up on the sand walker and are attacked by the local analogs of goblins and orcs, dimps, which leads to baptism in the desert. The game takes place in a fantasy world with gods, demons, monsters, and the undead. The plot is divided into acts and gradually develops. The game is very friendly to beginners, so for me, a shooter and strategy player, it was very comfortable to play and easy to understand the game mechanics. For more serious play, you'll need to spend a couple of hours learning more about how to combine skills, upgrades, runes, armor, and weapons to create a build that's playable for you. Anima ARPG is an isometric role-playing game on Android in the spirit of the old school. Many details are reminiscent of the immortal Diablo, the font, the gothic style, clearing dungeons with hordes of demons and monsters, boss battles, and a ton of loot. The game takes place in a medieval fantasy world in which demons have awakened, as the introductory video tells us. We act as a wandering hero. On our journey, a strange hooded man finds us and calls us to follow him into the city. 
Upon arrival in the city, the captain of the palace guard, Arvid, will be waiting for us. Having met him, we learn from him a story that began a hundred days ago. After a strange earthquake, terrifying sounds began to be heard in the depths of the basements. At some time, the general of the guard gathered a detachment and went into the depths of the basements for reconnaissance, from which only one soldier returned. He talked about a real massacre that was carried out by some demons. This is where the story ends, and Captain Arvid asks us to follow in the footsteps of the detachment and find out the reasons for their death. Warspear Online is pixel hardcore in the spirit of classic fantasy Amorx. A game with a lamp atmosphere, a 13-year history, and fans from all over the world. This is a game for those who love real hardcore, challenging tasks, and communication with other players. The game has many mechanics and a rich role-playing system. The player will have to choose one of the factions, develop his character, and fight with other players on the opposing side. There are currently four races and two factions in the game, Mountain Clans and the Dan vs. the Chosen and the Firstborn. Each race has its own starting island, on which the newcomer will have to go through a chain of quests, hunt monsters, collect plants, kill bosses, and so on. The playing field resembles a market. Everyone is noisy, running and looking for something. In the lower left corner of the display, there is a chat. Here players sell things, ask for help and argue about their coolness. There is no training mode, you have to figure it out yourself. The Bard's Tale This game skillfully combines two genres at once, hack and slash and action slashed RPG. The main storyline is completely linear, but the bad slash good role playing here works very well, allowing you to solve the situation in different ways. The final denouement immediately gives you a choice of three endings, allowing you, as a true lover of intoxicating drinks, to send everyone to the end and leave. Despite the seemingly standard scenario of defeat the villains in three towers and save the princess, due to the unexpected situations in which our hero finds himself, the game manages to keep us engaged until the final credits. Banal actions of the genre, for example, like collecting items from defeated enemies, are maximally simplified here, there is no inventory and all of them are immediately converted into a monetary version, which is why our three-dimensional wallet in the interface begins to increase in size. For example, among the items obtained, you may find a family portrait of local goblins. Hero Siege is a hack and slash game with roguelike and RPG elements. Destroy hordes of monsters, grow your skill tree, and look for better equipment. The game has two modes, single player and multiplayer. In single player, we play alone, and in multiplayer, we can be joined by three players. The game has many classes from warrior, archer to pirate and guy with a chainsaw. You can change the look of your character using a wide range of masks. After creating a character, we find ourselves in a village where there is a cellar and many other NPCs. In terms of graphics, Hero Siege features retro-style pixel graphics that give the game a classic, nostalgic look. The colorful environments and enemies are well-designed, and the game's animations are smooth. The soundtrack features an energetic synth sound that matches the fast-paced action of the game. Nordicandia is a game from Iterative Studios. The project combines genres and elements such as action and rough, as well as slasher and crafting. The game is designed for multiplayer play only. Nordicandia will appeal to fans of fighting roguelikes with isometric worlds and simple tap controls. The player gets the opportunity to choose the race and class of the character and is transported to dark fantasy worlds filled with all kinds of evil spirits, demons, skeletons, monsters, monsters, ghosts, which will have to be destroyed by the hundreds. Go to different locations and wield melee weapons, shoot with a bow, use magic and traps. Skylore is a free-to-play mobile MMORPG from the creators of Warspear, AIGRIND. The game is made in a fantasy setting and cartoon style. The story in it tells about heroes who once lived in a world without magic and gods, but at one point a mysterious force changed everything, and now they have to solve this riddle. Users can level up their characters of classic classes, travel along the edge of two big worlds, and fight in targeted isometric battles alone or in the company of friends. The controls in Skylore are perfectly adapted to touchscreen devices. Simply click on any part of the environment to move around, make contact with other characters, open chests, or attack enemies. Skylore is a good MMORPG with clear gameplay and moreover, 
Graphics that don't hurt the eyes. DUI's M. Antel, an open-world action RPG with total destruction. According to the plot, the end of the world came, but our hero did not wait, but prepared. I stocked up on provisions and managed to jump into the shelter I had made. But at some point the buckwheat ran out and we had to get out of the bunker. This is how our adventures begin. The gameplay is a leisurely third-person ARPG with survival elements. The action system is mainly represented by simple close combat using a nail puller, interspersed with rolling and throwing a limited number of throwing weapons. We hit only with a regular and heavily charged blow. There aren't many serious fights, you mostly need to explore the map, although there are bosses and intense combat missions. Titan Quest is the best successor to the unforgettable Diablo in recent times. This is an action RPG with all the inherent Jenner attributes, long character development, thousands of items and crowds of monsters. True, in contrast to the satanic orientation of Diablo, the world of TQ is entirely built on the myths of ancient Greece, the Egyptian epic and other ancient legends. The plot basically begins with character creation, where you can also choose the difficulty level. One of the features of this game is that you cannot set the difficulty level to high until you beat the game on easy and medium. Basically, we have to do more than just fight and talk. You will also need to trade, and believe me, you will need to run to the merchant almost constantly, because jars of health and mana are generally not lying around on the road. You can sell loot to a merchant, which is collected quite a lot while moving around locations. After all, you need to open chests, and defeated enemies also drop items that are added to your inventory. If you do not agree with the selection, write in the comments what games you would include.